Welcome to Soccer Down Here Network's coverage of the inaugural blast-off battle hosted by Huntsville City Football Club, the inaugural tournament that is going to be held the weekend of February 16th and 18th in Huntsville, Alabama at Wicks Family Field and Joe Davis Stadium. A four-team friendly invitational featuring Huntsville City Football Club, MLS Next Pro's newest team in Chattanooga FC, South Georgia Tormenta of USL League One, and the University of Alabama Huntsville. Over the next half hour or so, we're going to be catching up with individuals that are attached to each of these four clubs as they get ready for the weekend for the action on February 16th and February 18th that will be broadcast on the Soccer Down Here Network. So what we're going to do without wasting any time is get you into the first matchup. The first matchup, it is Friday the 16th, 4 o'clock local time, 5 o'clock Eastern time, and it is between Chattanooga FC and South Georgia Tormenta. Our guest from South Georgia Tormenta is Niall Watson, a 23-year-old winger from Southport Football Club who was signed to a multi-year deal before the end of the 2023 calendar year, and he's getting used to life in Statesboro with South Georgia Tormenta and life in USL League One after coming from Southport Football Club, the club that he supported growing up back home in England. So here's our conversation with Niall and what it's like for him to be in a totally new environment on this side of the Atlantic as South Georgia Tormenta gets ready for blast-off battle. It's been very good. Um, You know, it's a lot different different from home. But but no, I've I've really enjoyed my time here so far. All the lads have been great. Uh, They've made me feel very welcome. The trainings have been very good. Um, so yeah, first impressions of my first week are, are very positive. Yeah. When you look back at the the match that just happened against Mercer, what were some of the takeaways from the club getting ready for these two matches in three days? You can see where what the manager and, and, and like you can see where he wants us to to get better. You know, it's a new system. Um, the system that the lads are not used to. Um, it's completely new. So. You know, it's just getting used to the way he wants us to play and, and we're getting into grips of it this week. We we know what he wants us to do uh, defensively and effectively. So, you know, working this week, that's that's coming now, leading up to the, to the games on the weekend. We're confident that we're getting used to how we want us to play and, and you know, it's exciting. Um, and, you know, it's, it's sort of definitely something to look forward to, especially when the season begins. When it comes to your role specifically out there for Ian Cameron and South Georgia Tormenta. Take me into like what you're seeing if you're out there on the pitch and how you integrate into what Coach Cameron is looking for offensively and defensively. So how, how we, how he's kind of looking at the, the, the likes of myself and the, the other wingers in the team, whoever will be playing. Um, kind of our role is, you know, affect, you know, we've got great pace in the team and, you know, how he wants us to play with in terms of wide players. He wants us to stay kind of high and wide. Uh, once the ball comes into the midfield, constantly making runs. You know, we're, we're working on trying to be such a direct team. And with the players we've got, we've got great pace. We've got players who are very clinical in front of goal. So, you know, the main objective is obviously to score goals, but score goals in different ways, whether it's a pullback in the box or crosses coming in or kind of like a goal where you've got the ball as a wing, you're taking them on, you kind of score like a solo goal so solo goal sorry so you know there's there's as being a winger there's loads of uh ways that we can try and affect the game and obviously that's where the managers and and everyone's trying to get the best out especially me how they've been working with me loads of different ways running behind coming into feet you know and all of this is a lot different uh a lot different to what i'm used to so you know it's dead interesting um you know being a part of it and and you know learning off off the manager it's exciting, and I, I'm I'm very confident that with the work and the help and the training that I'm going through, it'll definitely make not just me, but definitely the whole team and players themselves a lot better. When it comes to getting comfortable with those around you, that you're going to be having those little societies that we talk about. Where are you in developing that rhythm and that second nature of understanding where folks are going to go offensively, so it just becomes that easy thing for you to, to work the ball up the field well that's how it does it that's how it works it, being teammates all good being teammates you've got to have relationships on the pitch and you know 
stuff that we do off the pitch as well uh, uh, sorry off the pitch will also benefit how we are on the pitch we get talking to players for instance the, the, the likes of Pedro who, who like to play and like to sit in like the eight role having good relationships with him I'll know when he goes and when he'll know when I go and then certain movements based on how what we do they'll know what moves to make so you know it's, it's little stuff like that and you know that goes all over the pitch but Definitely from from the way go, which you know, it's, it's all about team bonds and relationships, getting to know everyone, and you know that's what definitely makes us a better team for sure. Now there are legends out there when it comes to the team bonding that uh, Miss Nitra wants you to put your cell phone in a box when you go in to have dinner, and you're not allowed to touch it, you're not allowed to bring it with you. If you do, it's a kangaroo court, and you have to answer to your teammates. Have you had the chance to put your cell phone in a box and sit and talk with teammates, or how how is all of this bonding going? That that that's completely true. Yeah, you know, it's um, again it's something completely new for me. Uh, so it's it's quite fascinating in that sense. But you know, I totally get it coming in, and you know, lunchtime is it's time to spend with all the teammates talking. The last thing you kind of want, especially with this day and age, phones are getting so much bigger now. Apps, for instance. People are always always constantly on the phone and and like and the, the the idea of coming in, putting the phone away, and then talking amongst each other again, it just builds that friendship and you know builds relationships within the team. And the worst thing the worst thing to be is is in a team where you, you haven't got relationships, you just kind of turn up. It's a chore, you and you, and then you walk off and that's your day done. You know, having relationships it makes the place ten times better. And, you know, with that being in place, you know, I feel like me, in myself and definitely around, like, it's not just lunchtime, players come in, never really on the phones, they're all chatting, they're all, we're all getting along. So, you know, and, and as I said, with, with good relationships, it, all, it, it always, you know, it, you always tend to perform well with the players. So, you, you know, with with the idea of putting the phone in the basket, it, it's, definitely a, it's definitely a good good idea, I think. When this weekend is done, if you and I were to have a conversation Monday, Monday afternoon, from your perspective, two matches in three days plus travel, probably seven or eight hours on a bus, what would you say for the weekend to be a success looking toward the larger picture and getting ready for the USL League One season? What would you say the team needed to do? Not necessarily just in wins and losses, although wins and losses would be, you know, winning would be a, a great aspect in this. But what do you think needs to occur as a part of the growth so things can continue to grow to be successful? I'd say definitely if, you know, you're never going to win every game. And, and you know, in terms of preseason, you want to win every game. It, it, it's no big deal if you do lose rather than obviously losing in the league where you're losing points. But I think with in in preseason, especially with this weekend, it's all about getting minutes into the like into the legs, um, you know, going back in terms of relationship building, relationships on the field, and you know that, that's what it's all about. But I'd say the biggest thing is you know, and you know, you've seen it against Mercy. You know, we got beat very frustrating. Uh, we definitely never played to the, our best the ability. What I what I've seen saying and what we can definitely play, especially this week, but. I'd say not to dwell on it because I think a lot of, you know, it's very frustrating as a player to lose a game of football. We all know that. It's like, you know, you work from Monday to Friday and then you play on the Saturday and then everything you do in training is to get the best out of the game on the Saturday. And, you know, majority of the, you know, most of the time, you, and if you win, it's great. But then it's the times that you lose and you might think to yourself, you've had a bad game or, you know, you know, you, you look to point fingers or blame people for, for certain situations, but I think the best thing to do is just not dwell on it. It's gone. It's it's it, it's it, it wasn't our day, and we move on from it and we forget about it. And you know, we go into Monday and we have smiles on our faces. You know, it's a new week and we start. And I think that's the biggest thing because I think if you kind of dwell in all week on like a certain thing you did or whatever, it might eat you up and eat you up and eat you up. And then I think. Majority of the players, they have that motivation to buy. I've got to do something on the, this weekend. Got to do something this weekend. Got to do this weekend. And you put unnecessary pressure on yourself. And I think if you just to definitely just to forget about what's happened, concentrate on the next game because certain games you play certain ways. So you know, forget about it. Concentrate on to the next game. And I think with that mind process as well, I think that'll help us in the in the long run in terms of wins. 
stuff out. What are you looking forward to the most about Huntsville? Anything off the page? You've, uh, have you done any research? What are you looking forward to the most? In all fairness, I'm obviously not as experienced as of some of the other players, especially the ones from America. Like I'm new to the I'm new to the states. The first time I've ever been to the states. So in terms of playing the opposition, I haven't really got a full good knowledge. I know basics, but I think the most most thing I'm excited for is definitely just to. Obviously, playing the game, which is, you know, you want to do your best, especially in front of the manager and, and all the members of staff at Tormenta, you know, to kind of prove why you've been selected to, to play for this club. But then it's also, for me personally, it's to experience another part of America and, and you know, to experience another part of, of a, to experience another team to play against. And 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 again, it's just, it, it's minutes in the legs. And, and I'd say, I'd say that for me personally. Next up, Chattanooga FC and one of their stars, one of their talisman that is definitely one to put the ball in the back of the net for them. Last season did so in NISA, and now it's a new adventure for Chattanooga FC as they have moved over into MLS Next Pro, and it will be an instant rivalry with Huntsville City Football Club and all of the other teams here in the southeastern footprint when it comes to that particular league. So with Chattanooga FC... Embarking on this new challenge, we figured we would catch up with Alex McGrath and find out about the new adventure, the new season, and getting ready for the weekend. It's been good. It's been exciting to be back and obviously a few changes with the, the new league and, and all that stuff. So, now it's been good and we've got quite a good group of lads at the minute, but I think the main thing is just everyone's excited to be playing, playing soccer again. So... What do you think of the new league and the new idea and transferring uh, over from one league to another? Well, obviously, there's a lot of change. I think a lot of it positive. Um, I think as a player, obviously, you always want to be moving in a forward direction, and I definitely think we've we've done that. So it's exciting, exciting to be at Chattanooga, and with everything that's going on, I think it's uh, no, it's definitely a good time to be involved with the club. When it came to this season and training camp and getting ready for the matchups this weekend, looking back to last year, as a player and then maybe as an entire squad, what do you think the biggest lesson from the 2023 season is that you brought forward this year? Like I said, it could be yourself or it could be from a team perspective. What do you think the biggest lesson is that you brought forward this year? Um, I think the biggest thing is obviously – the structure of football in the U.S. with the playoffs. I mean, obviously, you want to do as well as you can in the in the regular season and and use that momentum going forward. But I think the big thing at the end of the year is the playoffs. So you've just got to find a way to to fine tune throughout the season to 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 figure out a way to perform your best when it comes to that time of the year, really. So that's my biggest takeaway because with the, with the way results went. The past couple of seasons, obviously, we've done well in the regular season and not performed to where we want to be when it when it gets down to the playoffs. So I think just managing that a little bit more, um, whether it's mentally or, or physically, just being ready for, for the end of the season. When it comes to getting ready for this year, obviously, it's going to be two matches and a quick turnaround, Friday, Sunday, those kinds of things. And in catching up with Coach, He's more of the mindset of, uh, I'm not really looking at the other guys. Uh, we got to focus on ourselves and get ready for the season. What is, uh, what's, uh, what's training camp been like so far with new faces integrating? Trial is still part of the process. How, how chaotic is it? How much, uh, how much learning is going on right now? Yeah, I mean, it can be, it can be pretty chaotic. Um, I mean, it's good. We always have a decent core together which I think helps any new guys coming in because obviously Rod has his philosophy that we stick to and we, we pretty much work non-stop every day on similar things but things that will move us in the right direction so you sort of know what you're going to get in terms of uh, training but it is just making sure how well getting the lads integrated as, as quick as possible and whether it's someone who's been on trial here for two days or someone who's signed and, and been here for two weeks, it's just trying to get everyone up to speed because obviously it's nice we have a little bit of time for pre-season, but it's still not a huge 
a huge amount of time to sort of get everything where you want to be and I think this weekend is a good challenge the fact we have the two games and I said to the lads at the end of training like it's a good opportunity for not just the trialists but lads who are new to the team and trying to break into the squad and current players who maybe played a lot of minutes last year to make sure that you're still you're still sort of earning your place and I think we've got good competition which which always pushes that so it'll be an interesting weekend I think. What about you? Where are you right now when it comes to you getting integrated and getting to full song and being where you need to be when the season starts? When, when we talk about training camp and jumping in, how, how long does it take you to kind of get oriented and figure out, okay, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a pretty good run here. I'm getting things the way that I should. When it comes to you and your game, where do you think you are right now? I feel pretty good, to be honest, in terms of fitness. And I think it's finding the balance like in the off-season because it is quite an extended time where you're not with the team. Um, so I, I've been trying to ease back in a little bit. It's difficult because obviously you're always looking forward to the first day of training and everyone wants to be 100% in. But I, I feel like we've done a good job of managing it a little bit in terms of just gradually increasing the intensity. Um, but personally, no, I feel feel pretty good and obviously it helps I've been I think this is my fourth year with with Rod which definitely helps as a player I know his philosophy and I know him as a person as well so I think that gives me a little bit not not an advantage but just a little bit more it's a bit easier for me to understand what he wants yeah there's still things he wants me to to change and improve on which I think throughout your career that's you always have to be looking for those things but yeah, I, th- I feel like I'm, I'm in a good spot and I'm, I'm definitely happy here in Chattanooga. So so how, for someone who will be watching you this weekend in Huntsville for the first time, and, you know, they, they might have seen a highlight here or there, they might have seen, you know, game action or read something or seen something on YouTube about, about CFC, how would you describe how you play as a unit and the, the expectations of getting closer to that with these first two games. How would you describe how Chattanooga FC plays? Well, I mean, the the easiest word would be possession. Obviously, we look to keep the ball as much as we can. And I think we, we're, quite, we're aiming to be quite dynamic with it as well, not just pointless possession. Like, everything we do has a purpose, um, which takes time, especially as a team, because obviously looking after the ball and playing on different fields, it definitely, definitely tests your ability, but... I think that's the reason that Rod brings in certain players and the lads we've had in the past can all can all play with, with the ball. So I think it's, yeah, possession's definitely the easiest way to, to sum up CFC and Rod's philosophy. But if I was to maybe add an extra word, I would, I would say probably progressive possession. That would be a good way to look at it. And at the same time, anticipation is, is that it's going to be a full house. It's going to be loud. It's a traditionally very loud environment. Another good test being in one of these environments where you're going up against a, a South Georgia Tormenta on a Friday and then you're going up against uh, Alabama Huntsville on a, a Sunday. And, I mean, it's like Sunday brunch, man. I mean, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning. Interesting tests on a full house with a loud environment, something else that uh, you get to experience early in the year. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, as, a, as a player, you obviously always want to play in front of as many fans as possible and thankfully we always have that here at Finley so it'll be good uh, to go somewhere else it's hopefully like that and I mean we always have really faithful CFC supporters that, that travel even last year when we were going cross country they were they were following us all over the place and now it's nice that we, we have a lot of regional games so hopefully well I, I know for a fact that there'll be plenty of CFC fans there and that's exciting not just for the players but obviously for supporters of the club to be able to travel a little bit more locally. Second matchup on your Friday. It is 7 o'clock kick on Friday night. It is the University of Alabama Huntsville Chargers and the hosts, Huntsville City Football Club. Let's check in with the Chargers, who were a late addition to the tournament after FC Tulsa, unfortunately, had to back out of the four-team tournament. So the local college now gets to go in, and they're going to be going up against the hosts. So for the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville, we catch up with rising senior Kieran Rowe. First question is to ask Kieran, looking back at the 2023 season and the lessons that they can take from it and apply to 2024, where they are jumping into the pool earlier than they normally would with this tournament. Okay, I thought last year 
was uh, was a good year, all in all. I thought uh, out of the three that I've been here, it was definitely the the best I've seen since we've been here. I really enjoyed it. I think the lads really enjoyed it. Uh, as from a results perspective, it went really well. We did. We achieved our targets. And I thought from performances, from man to man, I thought was was night and day from times before last year. So, so really good in that sense. So then all of a sudden, 2024 is probably getting a bit of an earlier start than you would have ever anticipated. There's a knock on the door from the folks over at Huntsville City, and they're like, uh, would you like to be the fourth? What was the, what was the buzz like when you guys found out you were going to be a part of the tournament? As you can imagine, the lads were delighted. It's one of those, isn't it? When that comes up, it's, again, we weren't meant to start again until uh, early March. So, you know, it was a bit earlier than expected, but you can turn down an opportunity like that. What a great, a great opportunity it is to, you know, play at the John Wickster Stadium and in front of a load of people as well. It, it should be a great time and we're all looking forward to it. And we were, and as you can imagine, we were delighted when the news came out that we'd been added uh, into the into the mix. So, Yep, it's you, Hunt City, Chattanooga FC, and South Georgia Tormenta, and you, you guys kind of get to, to show off to the entire region and to some folks into some different leagues, MLS Next Pro. And also in USL League One, with the, the conversations with the guys, I know you guys are pretty jazzed, but uh, what are your own expectations going into these two matches in a three-day period? Okay. Yeah, we set our expectations really high um, for the last couple of weeks now since we found out. Uh, training has been geared up. It's been higher intensity. Um, we're ready not only to take part, but uh, to be competitive. Uh, I don't think we're going to go there and want to be turned over every game that's not the mindset or the culture that we've built here so we're going to go there with the mindset we want to win every game and and i think that's the right way to be for someone who has not seen the chargers play how would you describe your your brand of football out there when you're going back and forth every single time out it is quick uh with direct i think uh, we love to get the ball forward, we love to score goals, and at the same time, we, we do our best to keep them out of our own net. Um, but yeah, the lads, you can expect a lot of high tempo, high pressing, uh, and really getting after the game and trying to have our own stamp on it. So now, being one of the you're the, heading into your senior season, a rising senior now, as things stand, uh, what's it been like for you to see the sport in and of itself grow collegiately and now professionally there? with what you're seeing from Huntsville City. What's it been like to see that the game expand the way that it has? And as an outsider, it's been great to see um, ever since the Huntsville MLS, MLS Next has come in. A lot of a lot more fans. I've seen more fans at our games and a lot more people just uh, paying attention and buying into into Huntsville itself and, and the sport that it brings and especially the football, the, so the soccer, as you'd call it, here now. Um, definitely, there's loads more people. There's loads more people that are interested and like even at campus here now, a lot of the lads and, uh, and I have as well would get stopped here and ask questions about it. And are you going to the games? Are you going to the MLS games? And, and it's good. It's, it's great for the sport. And I think it's only ever going to get bigger, especially with the World Cup around the corner. I think that'll have a massive influence as well. So, so wait, a, so you're getting stopped on campus? People are stopping you like in class and in the, uh, grocery, yeah. in the grocery store and everything? Me, or if it is because of the soccer, I'm not too sure, but. No, again, it's great, and and we love it. And the more people that we can get there, the better for better for it is for the culture on the campus. The better it is for the soccer team. The more exposure, and it, and it is positive for everyone. So, all right. So for folks who haven't had the chance to see UAH out there on the pitch, uh, I'm going into the stadium for the first time. If I'm buying a ticket and I'm seeing the Chargers for the first time, who are some of the folks that when I look at in the program or when I look at you know on my phone doing my research? Who, who do I gravitate toward in, in a visual sense? Who are some of the, the guys that the folks need to keep an eye on? Other than yourself, obviously. Uh, other than myself, obviously. Oh, oh, there's loads of lads. Rafa, our top goal scorer, he, he's, he was scoring for fun in the, uh, in the full, so hopefully he can carry that on. Uh, all the way back to people at the back, like Charlie Garrison's filling in at centre-back, and, and he'll do a great job there, I'm sure. Um, you got some really young, good young talents. Oli, uh, striker again, flashy. He'll be good for us. And then, and again, there's even like other young lads such as Gabe, and and we've got Marcus as well. There's loads of lads, and and collectively, hopefully, they put together a joint team performance on the day or the two days. So, when it comes to doing things a month early, I mean, how where are you guys right now? 
less than a week away from your first competition. I mean, I'm in, the, in talking to coach roster is not, doesn't have as many folks available as it normally would. And so there's this core group of guys having to start things a month early. How does that, you know, does, how does that, you know, set your clock differently in how you're trying to prepare things? Yeah, it's been tough. Obviously, I'm sure you just spoke to coach and he's mentioned about the injury situations we've got, uh, lacking defenders. We've had to bring one in from last year that played. Um, so, yeah, it, it's difficult. But again, I think the lads will get together and and as a collective, find a way to put together a good performance. And, and they're really enthusiastic about it in training and everything's deliberate. So I don't think it was as far back as you might think only having been training properly for a couple of weeks. I think that we won't be too far off it come, come next Friday. Well, that's what, well, that's what I hope anyway. So. All right. So then uh, the conversations, what are they specifically going up against uh, Huntsville city? I mean, what are the, when, when you and the guys are hanging out after practice, you're hanging out in the dorm, you're hanging out in the apartment specifically knowing that Huntsville city football club is there on the calendar it is an intra-city battle between UAH and HCFC. What are the conversations like when you guys are catching up with each other? It is, it's good. It's healthy. It's, it's, we beat them once. They beat us once since we played them. Uh, it almost feels like it's the winner-takes-all game after being 1-1. I think, um, again, there's not, there couldn't be a better environment for it in playing on a Friday night at the John Wick. And, and we're excited. We're really excited to get going and, and give it our best shot. Um, I think I'd be lying if I told you I don't think we're underdogs. Of course, some of those lads are brilliant footballers. We've seen it firsthand. But again, I think we'll give it our all, and and that's what we can do at the end of the day. And and hopefully it comes in a positive result. And so last up, that means it's time for the hosts and Huntsville City Football Club. One of the names that was in the headlines last season for Jack Collison and for the home team this weekend, Jonathan Bolaños, an experienced an experienced individual, experienced player that has done wonders in the community and on the field for Huntsville City Football Club. So along those same lines that we had with Kieran Rowe, Jonathan Bolaños, a part of a unique experience, being a part of a first-year club in Huntsville. So we asked, going back to 2023 season, what were some of the memories that have stuck with you and being a part of the fabric of soccer and professional soccer in Huntsville? Yeah, I mean, from an individual perspective, you know, scoring my first goal at Joe Davis, uh, that first game as well was absolutely electric to have a sold out stadium close to 7000 fans and really see the city come together for uh, for soccer, you know, the first professional atmosphere, you know, soccer game in Alabama. So that was unbelievable. And then pretty much, you know, it was obviously a first year for everyone. So meeting new guys and the whole coaching staff playing in a new league for me personally, you know, coming from the USL, not to MLS next pro, pro is completely different. And, you know, picking up road wins and creating that team camaraderie over the year, it was uh, just overall a, a great year. Obviously we fell short of our goal, which was making the playoffs, but really good year for uh, for a first year club, I would say. I was going to ask, what was the response like in town? Is it one of those things where you get recognized now when you go, go shopping <laughs> grocery store or something like that yeah it's actually pretty cool i think uh huntsville is is a, a smaller city i would say you know compared to obviously a lot of major cities around and i uh, it's really great because you really feel like a professional here you know i get recognized in the you know downtown area or going to a coffee shop or you know going into a grocery store and to get that is is always awesome and just to see the fans around and how much support we have here in the city of huntsville is is just unbelievable when you look at this season, I know that you're just kind of uh, turning the engine over and getting ready for 2024, but what's yep. it been like so far with all of the new faces and integrating all of the, the the carryovers like you coming from the 23 roster and getting ready for 24? What's it been like so far? Exactly. It's been awesome. I think it's we've only been about two weeks into preseason. So a lot of it is, I'm, you know, from a leadership perspective, for me personally, I've been trying to welcome in the new guys. We have a more younger dynamic core of uh guys coming in and really some great attacking players and defensive players which were we were missing from last year so now just you know creating that collective team mentality or identity you know right way of playing going into the season are the things we want to try to form this preseason so how do you do that i mean with all of these guys i mean it's it's not i don't think it's as simple as you know shaking somebody's hand and sitting there going yeah. 
you know, hey, I'm, I'm Jonathan Bolaños and welcome aboard. We're going to do things this way. And it's not on like a big chalkboard or something that, you know, here are the here are the guideposts to what's going on. What, what is no, the day to day yeah. like in trying to get all of this stuff oriented together? Yeah, it's, 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 it's hard. Don't get me wrong. I mean, luckily, the preseason is pretty long that we we have enough time to integrate the younger guys, get them used to the system of play. But also from myself and the three or four guys, you know, the core group of returners, we're just trying to set the standard. And, you know, whether that's on the field or in the locker room, letting them know that HCFC way is what we like to call it, you know, whether that's on the field in terms of how we play or off the field, our, our, you know, our presence in the community and what we want to, how we want to be in the community, how we want to be pictured and, and what we represent here in Huntsville. So what is the HCFC way? I mean, I, you, I, and you can spill secrets if you want. I don't know if this is something that stays behind closed doors and it's just like on a plaque or something. But when <laughs> you're trying to express the HCFC way, whether it's to someone like me who gets to, to watch you play or someone mm-hmm. who's going to be inside that locker room, how would you break that down both on the field and in the community? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to give away too much. It's kind of of our team identity, you could say, but it's just, you know, bringing that intensity every day. But the big thing I think Jack did really well in, in, in bringing the new guys is he's not even bringing great players, but great people off the field. And that creates the team culture that, that we aspire to have this year. And again, that, that HCFC way is, is being electric, you know, bringing that intensity on the field, but also being great people and um, and people in the community to represent Huntsville, yeah. What's it like to see someone who's new to the HCFC way get mm-hmm. it and embrace what you're trying to to be out there in the community and on the field? What's it like to see the light come on for somebody new? I mean, it's unbelievable. I think we also have a lot of the Academy boys from Nashville coming up, so we're trying to integrate them as well. And just teach them the different models and things that, you know, us older guys with a little bit more experience like to portray in our everyday lives, you know, again, being good people in the community, showing up in different appearances, volunteering as much as we can. And, you know, you see that with the fans that we have and the turnout we have, you know, we're really trying to create a good example here in the community and obviously be great players on the field as well. What has study hall been like getting ready for the the matchups in blast off battle? How much, how much time have you spent staring at computers and looking at <laughs> games and things like that and, and getting prepared? What's study hall been like for the guys? Yeah, I mean, if anything, it's not so much been on the on the on our opponents, I think, for this first uh, preseason tournament, you could say, for the blast-off battle, but it's just been more on focusing on our identity and creating that style that we want to play and impose on teams. I think that's what preseason is about a lot. You know, obviously, we study some teams, we study our opponents, but we're really trying to focus on our game and be as best as possible before that season opener. One of the, the really interesting aspects of this is that first match on Friday night, yep. you're, you're, the, you're the back end of the double header, and it's against Alabama Huntsville. And, and so it's, yep. it's, an interesting, it's an interesting showcase of the sport on a couple of different levels there for, for a match two in day one. Yeah, we've um it, it was an unlucky turnout with Tulsa, you know, dropping out of the tournament, but UAH has always been a strong opponent and obviously someone close by that you know we've loved to play with or against, I would say. And we've even had some of their guys, you know, come on trial, help us train some days. So for them, it's an opportunity to impress our coaches. You know, I know there's some guys that aspire to be pros there, but also a great opponent that we can play and know that they're going to bring the intensity every time we play against them after the matchups on february 16th it is february 18th and we get a bit of a flip when it comes to the teams playing each other it is brunch sunday brunch with the uh, uah chargers going up against chattanooga fc at 11 o'clock in the morning local time noon eastern time and then after that at 2 15 central 3 15 eastern it is the host huntsville city football club and South Georgia Tormenta. Once again, all of those one all of those matches will be on the SDH network, and it'll be at soccerdownhere.net. 
Mixler, M-I-X-L-R dot com. Easiest way to follow along and click the links is follow Soccer Down Here on all of your social media platforms, whether it is on X, whether it is on Instagram, whether it is on Facebook. Follow and like all of the activities going on at Soccer Down Here. You can click on the link. It gets you into listening to all of the live action that's going to be going on all weekend long at Wicks Family Field and Joe Davis Stadium on the 16th and the 18th. And you can get tickets. Go to to a MLSNextPro.com slash Huntsville City FC backslash blast off dash battle. You can buy tickets for the uh, Huntsville City blast off battle on sale. You can get a $15 per day pass or for the entire weekend, $25 weekend pass. HuntsvilleCityFC.com backslash tickets gets you the uh, tickets that you're looking for. Anticipate a lot of your friends being there. The anticipation is that fans from Tormenta will make it from Statesboro. You have the fans coming in from the new rival in Chattanooga FC. They'll make the trip over to Huntsville. And then you have UAH fans coming in to watch their team a little earlier than they normally would. Plus, you have Huntsville City Football Club and all the fans that filled up uh, the stadium last season getting their first chance to see things in a round-robin tournament kind of a environment. Very, very cool thing here with the blast-off battle and Huntsville City Football Club. Thanks to all of the clubs for uh, giving us the chance to look into each one of the, the four windows that is co- going to be shown in the early stages of the 2024 seasons. Thanks to all of the communications departments and all of the clubs. Thanks to the individuals who were a part of making this happen in each of those venues. Thanks to Niall Watson. Thanks to Alex McGrath. Thanks to Kieran Rowe. Thanks to Jonathan Bolaños. And thanks to Huntsville City Football Club and their parent club, Nashville SC, for letting SDH be a part of telling the story of the blast-off battle going forward. So once again, big shout-out to everybody at Huntsville City Football Club and a big shout-out to you. We look forward to seeing you this weekend at Wicks Family Field and Joe Davis Stadium for the inaugural blast-off battle where South Georgia Tormenta, Chattanooga FC, the Alabama Huntsville Chargers, and Huntsville City Football Club will be part of a large showcase You've got the high school showcase on Saturday as well. That's going to be there in Huntsville. A lot of activities going on. Go to HuntsvilleCityFC.com, and you can find out everything going on, all the different levels, the celebration of soccer in Huntsville coming up very, very soon. So for everybody here at SDH, you know, for the four clubs that are going to be a part of the Blast Off Battle, I'm John Nelson. Thanks for hanging out with us here for the preview of the Blast Off Battle getting ready this weekend in Huntsville, Alabama. Play it safe, everybody. We'll see you there. 